All right, today's the day. Finally, we got our new pump that we're going to be installing in in this location. I'm going to be pulling this one out because this is the one that kind of sucks and pushes by glycol through the, the loops here. So I got a bigger pump and it was on back order for like a month. So a month and a half later, I got the new pump. So I got to take this guy off, unwire it. I'm going to have to adjust some of the... Uh, the pecs here and I'm probably gonna have to refill this system just in here because I'm gonna lose some because this pump is hold on a second bear with me is uh oh boy substantially bigger so it's gonna have to be adjusted but it's it's definitely bigger so we'll see. Not much. I got to move it over. So I'm going to have to redo some things here to get that boy up there. But uh, yeah, so I would put a time lapse on for you could see it, but I don't know who knows how long it's going to take. So I got to un undo the electrical wiring to this pump, close off the valves, pull this pump out. I'm going to have to readjust where this hooks up. I'm going to have to push it over, probably retap into here. Where this bracket is to hold this i'm gonna have to get a longer piece of pex which i have extend it over and up so yeah we'll see so i'm excited because we got snow and there's probably almost it's for sure an inch maybe an inch and a half almost two inches out here so i got to get going on this so i can get that melted we're expecting um uh, they said like three to nine so who knows but if i don't get going on it it's going to be a mess so yeah uh next time you see i should have the pump up there i'm not sure how long it's going to take and then i'm going to fire it up because the biggest reason why i'm getting the new pump is to try to up the flow rates because i have 10 loops to see if i can get the flow rates to be faster that way i can get the glycol to go out there at a quicker rate to heat up the glycol coming back at a faster rate so the wood boiler is not running as much to try to keep up because it kind of struggles a little bit but it does get up the temp i'm just trying to get it up sooner so we're using less wood less electricity of the pumps running and so on so yeah like i said i'm going to get this going here quickly and uh we're going to see see how the new pump does so stay tuned okay well we got it in there she's definitely a bigger pump i mean it's hard to tell obviously in the, in the video here but she's She's bigger, I had to take this bracket, move it over, I had to put a different piece of PEX here, probably about this much longer to get it to fit. So I had to take these out, redo that, get it lined up. I mean, she's running right now, as we can tell, no leaks. But I did have to, I thought I bled the system good enough because I had all this shut off down below here. And then I, I turned that snow melt on after I thought I had it bled and you could just see the air just pump right into the line. So I had to re, re all the all the snow melt lines that go into the concrete individual. So I had to shut those off. So I bled the whole manifold, then did the, this loop here, shut all that off, do the main loop up top here where all this is. I did all that about twice to make sure all the air is out. I mean, she's holding good at 25, I don't know if you guys can see that, about 25 pounds of pressure. That's about what I had at last time. Um, I've had it running for maybe 10 minutes now. I just wanted to make sure there was no leaks. Everything looks pretty good. But uh, the flow rate 100% is, is double. I got it on the highest setting right now because I want to get it up to temp quick. So I can, I got to readjust all the, the flows. There's two of them, loop four and loop 10, are always going to be the least amount of flow because those are the, the shortest runs. Don't really want to get into that, but those are the shortest runs. So when the water, the glycol comes back, it's always the hottest. So I try to slow it down so they equally get up the up to temp but i can tell you it, the water or the glycol is not even up to temp yet so obviously when it's really cold it's thicker than and it is when it's up to temp so i, I kind of want to wait till it gets up to operating temp so i can really 
dial in the loops to make sure they're balanced really good. That way they, the whole slab heats up at the same rate. But other than that, <clears throat> she's, uh, she fits. I mean, she's so much smaller than this, this pump here, which is the exact same pump that was here. Um, so the lowest setting on this pump was, is more, I'd say one and a quarter more than the highest setting of my last pump. So it's drastically better or more flow. So it's always hard to say, but it's, it's, it's got more gallons per minute, but the head pressure, I think is what they call it. The head pressure was like triple the amount. So we're, we're flowing hundreds of gallons through these lines. I'd say there's probably 40 gallons minimum in all these runs. They're on average 250, 275 distance, and there's 10 of them. So that's a lot. It's over 2,000 feet of three-quarter inch packs. So if you want to do the math on the gallons of that, it's a lot, plus the, what the rest of the system is. So uh, I'm also doing another test on how well the wood boiler's handling the system compared to before it's going to change now because the flow rate's different i did add another uh tank so i have two tanks instead of one on my system over there so i'm kind of calculating that but i know getting the flow up i mean she's almost she's cruising right now so i'm i'm pretty happy i mean we'll probably be up to temp within the next 10 minutes but this pump is just as quiet as the other one which i'm surprised it's not very, not very uh, loud at all. I mean, you can hear it, but it's not, it's not bad. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna leave it on the, the, the fast setting. I may put it down to, we'll see what happens when it's up to temp. I'll know by the flow rate. I may change it back to medium or even down below to the first one, so we'll see. Um, but yeah, she's still pretty, she's warm, but nothing crazy. Where that one's screaming hot, but that's getting more hotter water. This one's springing back the water. So, but hopefully, uh, she does the job. I mean, she wasn't cheap. She's pretty expensive. But now I have an extra spare either for that, this pump, or for the boiler. Because these pumps are about a little bit more flow rate and head pressure than my boiler pump. So, I have, now I have an extra, extra spare. So, that's good. But uh, in the springtime, though, I am going to redo this. I'm going to have temp gauges on all the returns. So there'll be a 90, there'll be a temp gauge to a 90 straight over to another 90 straight down. I'm going to clean this up. That way I can really dial in the flow rate on this. Because if every return temp is identical, that'll really kind of balance out. That's how you'll know. To me, that's how I'll know the flow rate is what the return temp is. If the return temps are within a couple degrees of each other, they're the same, right? That means the slab's uh, warming up at the same rate, so. But those gauges ain't cheap, and I'm not doing any of that now because I'm gonna have to bleed the system, I'm gonna have to flush it out, or at least get it down enough where it's not leaking out. Cut all these lines, redo it, I'll secure them, but for now, it's, I mean, like I said, this was all last minute in the late fall, so. I got it in here, so yeah, I'll have to, uh, oh, that seems to be pretty good. I probably will close this up eventually. I mean, it's probably, yeah, you can feel the warmth. I'll probably close that off. I just wanted to make sure there was no leaks, and we're good there, so. But other than that, everything else is going good. Um, pressure's good. I kind of wanted to see what the pressure would be at when the temp gets up to temp now that I have this bigger pump. As long as you don't go above 30, we'll be okay, so. But yeah. Other than that, uh, she's good to go. I'm probably gonna set up the, uh, the time lapse here. I already have like four or five inches out there. It's, we're getting a little bit more than we expected. So uh, I can kind of turn the light on here so you can see it. I don't know if you're gonna get a good view or not. But I don't know if it's, it's always hard to tell. But those are my footprints from 20 minutes ago. There's an easy four inches out there and I just started the snow melt, so. I'm gonna kind of see how she does handle that. I mean, I, I really don't know how it's gonna go now. If there's that much snow and it's heavy wet snow too. So I'm gonna have to go out there and do the rest of the driveway later, but. Yeah, so I got the pump in there. She's running fine, no leaks. The flow rate's definitely better than what it was. 
Um, even when the shoe was up to temp eventually, which took a while, it uh, I couldn't get all the flow rates to max out if I wanted to. And now they're already maxed out and it's on up to temp. So I'm pretty happy with that. So yeah, uh, stay tuned. I'll probably the next tomorrow I'll probably post a time lapse if I do take it, depending how it's going to be at night. So I don't know the quality or the clarity it's going to be. So, but yeah, stay tuned and uh, as always, stay burnt.